I'll start the meeting. Uh, this is Whaley Select Board meeting of April 11th, 2018. First agenda item is to approve meeting minutes of March 28th. I move we approve those minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next item, comments from the public. Does anybody here wish to make any comments? Okay, moving on, uh, appointments. The first, our, our only appointment this evening is, is Bob O'Bear of O'Bear Construction Company. Is going to talk some about his proposal to, to I guess we call it renovate or remodel the, the two parcels of land in Whateley. One is uh, the one that the, blue, that the blue school sits on uh, that's actually owned by Frontier. Uh, and the second one is the parcel behind that that's actually owned by the town. And there was requests for proposals out about a month ago, and we received the one from Mr. O'Bear here uh, April 2nd, that was uh, the response date. Uh, he presented us with information, uh, some description of what he's proposing to do, uh, a sketch of what the buildings would look like, uh, and we thought it would be appropriate to invite him to this meeting to anybody here could ask questions, hear him direct, and also for our viewing public to see what's being presented for that, uh, for them two parcels. And our intent is to discuss this further at the annual town meeting, probably that that's our initial thought now. Whether we need more discussion or not, we'll have to see how things go. So, okay, uh, Bob, we'll turn it over to you if you want to, you can come up closer yeah, if you want to. Walk it would be here easier here. probably. You want to sit here or come up or? Well, you can scooch up if sure. you want. But, uh, um, so, basically, uh, you all got the proposal that was submitted. Right. Um, so what we're you know, initially proposing is to uh, redevelop the existing Whiteley uh, Schoolhouse. Wait, wait, wait. Could, could you sit so we can hear? Oh, you sure. sit on that next oh, to yeah, Brian. Yeah, I'm going to sit next to Brian. Okay, here. Yeah, I'll be right there next to Brian. Thank you. First of all, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm Bob O'Bear, O'Bear Construction Company from Montague, Massachusetts. Um, so we submitted a proposal uh, based on the redevelopment of the existing Whateley Schoolhouse. Um, some preliminary design and uh, study, we were able to determine we could squeeze approximately 10 uh, one bedroom sort of open concept uh, units into the building with a residential conversion. Uh, utilizing the existing footprint of the building. Um, due to the competitive bid process, we thought it might be advantageous to uh, initially offer some sort of a, a affordable uh, designation and restriction on 25% of the units. We thought that would perhaps uh, help the town achieve uh, some additional affordable housing stock to meet their 40B requirements, which currently I believe the town has three or maybe four affordable units, which does not meet the 40B requirements, which means at any point another developer could come into town, identify a parcel, and, you know, sort of by mandate of state law, they would, they would present the proposal, whether the town liked it or not, they would have the legal right to sort of move the project forward. Um, by having the adequate amount of affordable housing stock, what it does is it, it helps meet the threshold that's required that would prevent that from ever happening in town. So, you know, sort of, it would be, you know, we, we would offer those units uh, with, with some sort of a deed restriction. Um, you know, there's a lot to talk about there and to see if that's something that the town would need, if, if the way we presented it would meet the state requirements for the town. Uh, to, to have those units count towards their 40B uh, allocation of units. Um, we also proposed a, a uh, potential phase two 
to the project, which would offer some additional affordable units. Uh, we were considering looking at the population in town, uh, perhaps some handicap accessible units for um, you know, aging people in town who want to remain in town, uh, with again some portion of those units being designated as affordable. Uh, our primary focus was the schoolhouse, but again we thought the potential for an additional space to add on or to create more affordable units if that was something that the town felt that they wanted to pursue through this project. So that, that's sort of the, the general scope of the project. Uh, we've done you know, multiple renovations of existing buildings uh, in Franklin County, Montague specifically, we've got a really good track record of renovating blighted properties, uh, property that's being disposed of by the town. Uh, we've won several RFPs for redevelopment of projects there and uh, have been able to take those projects from start to finish. Have you done any schools like this one? Uh, we haven't done any schools specifically, but we've done uh, eight unit apartment buildings, uh, eight unit mixed use building. We're currently renovating an 11 unit building. Um, so definitely projects of this size and scope. Have you, have you seen, have you seen yeah, 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 yeah. I looked at the PDF. Yeah. Dan, you want to, could you please come and get this and you can look in more detail. Uh, and share with your neighbors. Share with your neighbors. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay, and, and you've been working on a project in Waitley already, right? Uh, yeah, I own a property on uh, River Road, 59 River Road. It was a, a receivership uh, through the state. There was a blighted slum and blight property there that had been kind of overrun. So I, I also work as a state appointed receiver uh, through the housing courts uh, to clean up distressed property. So it's, it's a program through the Attorney General's office. So yeah, I, I actually renovated that property. We own it now. We're, we're trying to finish that up to uh, get the property back on the tax rolls as an occupied property. and clean up the farmland that was kind of been overrun and abused the last few years, so. Okay, T tell us a little more about your company. Uh, how many employees, uh, size? Of uh, we've budget? got about 15 employees. We've got uh, three people in the office plus a full-time bookkeeper. That's actually four of us in the office. Uh, we've been in business since 2005, incorporated. Uh, we run a residential and commercial management business as well. We manage about 60 residential commercial units right now. Um, we're, you know, full-time active general contractor, licensed, insured, bonded. Uh, we do frame to finish, high-end homes, additions, a little, little bit of everything. So, and we do most of our work in-house. So we, uh, we maintain the quality of the project from start to finish. So your plan and I, I could be completely off base, so I apologize if I am. No. But as I read it, your plan is to do the renovation on the on the school, build the build build the new structure next door, and then flip it. No, 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 no. Oh, I, I, I maintain a portfolio. So you you'll maintain them. So I guess my next question is, and I'm and I'm looking mostly at work you've done in Wendell and Leverett, which is great, sort of similar towns to yep. Waitley. Have you done any market research that would indicate a certain level of demand for mostly one or some two bedroom? Oh, there, there's a high demand, yeah. I mean, I've, I've done, there's a, a housing study that was done in Franklin County, it's a couple of years old, uh, that was done by the town of Montague that shows, I mean, specifically Montague has a, uh, a really aging housing stock, there's a shortage of units, um, there's a lot of, I mean, if you look at population statistics in general, there's an aging community in all of these towns. Um, I live in Montague. I'm on the Montague Planning Board. I'm on the Montague Capital Improvement Committee. Um, I have been for about five years on the Montague Planning Board. I mean, there's, there's you know, an aging baby boomer population that's typically looking to downsize. Um, there's not a lot of spaces for people to go. Um, there's, you know, a few spots here and there, but they get filled up quick and, and there's a high demand for those type of units. We recently finished a renovation in, in Montague of building seven one bedroom apartments and they're leased before they're finished. Um, they're all, you know, uh, a fine to a fine finish degree. 
and uh, nice spaces. Some of them are inclusive of all utilities, some aren't, depending on how we run the mechanicals. But, uh, you know, we have a maintain almost full occupancy in the units we manage now. And between, you know, this is an ideal location. So, I mean, this is, it's really, you have a unique structure here because, you know, people can commute to Northampton, to Amherst, to Greenfield. It, it really is a very good location. Um, I don't see any, you know, I, th I think there'll be strong demand. Um, I would, wouldn't anticipate anything less. You know, one bedroom units, you also shouldn't, you know, most likely statistically you won't, you know, it'll be a great impact to the town's tax basis because you're gonna get, a, you know, a good value out of this building when it's done being renovated, probably over a million dollars. You're gonna get a strong tax revenue from that. With one bedroom units, it's shown that you're gonna have less impact most likely on your schools because it's typically a, a single person or possibly a couple, but it's not <clears throat> typically suited for a large family or, you know, so, so this type of structure is not gonna really put a heavy strain on any existing uh, budgets, you know, with, within the town's sort of own finance structure. So uh, it's sort of a win-win a in, in that sense where you're gonna get added revenue on a tax base without a lot of strain on the town's resources. Have you heard anything back from Frontier on your proposal? I have not heard anything back from Frontier. Okay, and is your, now you, you've made a proposal for both parcels? I did, yes. Is it a complete package you're looking for, both? Yeah, or, or yeah, it, if it, one goes and not the other, does that? Yeah, you kind of need one or the other. I mean, the septic for this building is on the other lot, so it's, it's sort of like, it, you kind of have to have both, whereas I wouldn't be interested in the lot without the school building. The school building is the primary reason for the build out. Uh, again, phase two, my interest in phase two is to try to offer the town additional housing units that, that are designated affordable, if, if that's the climate for the town, but the project is not contingent on phase two. So phase two was, you know, almost an afterthought of the proposal where we said, well, you know, we, we, we actually have room here where we could add on to the schoolhouse or we could build another structure potentially if the town was receptive to the idea of increasing their affordable housing stock. Instead of getting uh, three units, you could get five, I think is, is the math. Um, and those again would be allocated towards your 40D requirements. So it, it was sort of, you know, yes, it would most likely require some changes to the zoning for that that parcel or that area in order for it to happen, and then that's a separate conversation and process. But if the climate was such that, that the town felt that that was advantageous, then phase two sort of opens up that conversation to happen. So is phase two strictly affordable housing, or would it be a mix? No, it would again be 25% be be total. The same 25%. Yeah, the same 25% total. Uh, how is that, you've shown a, a sketch here in another building, is that, is this other building phase two? That's phase two, yes. And there's, there's eight units there? Yeah, and that's just proposed again, that was a, 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 a okay. not an afterthought, but it was an addition that we thought, well, if, if the town likes the affordable idea that they can meet the stock, this is a good, op and they feel this is a good opportunity to try to achieve some of that, then we'd be, like to partner with the town and work towards that goal. Of, of making that happen through phase two. And are you envisioning single entrance like row, row houses or? Uh, I don't think we'd gotten that far. Except you know? Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. that was just yeah. sort of to get the count number, you know. Um, yeah. We didn't know if we were even gonna be selected or if there'd be 50 yeah. entries. So we were yeah. just trying to show conceptually what was possible. And do you have a, a time frame that once you do phase one to, to do phase two? I don't actually have a phase time for uh, a timeline for phase two. I don't. If we didn't agree to, to the the second parcel, what would you do with septic? Uh, you'd you put in a septic in, or is it, uh, if, is it, if, is if if we didn't? It? I'm sorry. So if the question the question is so if you didn't if I didn't do phase two, right? Uh, then the property would be used for its highest and best use, which. I don't know what that is right now. No, but if we if we didn't sell the second parcel to you, yep. 
you would have to do something with septic for the building. Yes, we would. That would be a problem. Is there room on that parcel for a septic? On the existing parcel? The parcel with the building? Uh, there may be. There may be. I, I, I mean, that's an, that's an engineering question. It was a design right. question that I think it's premature to be able to give you an, an accurate response. Why would he have to do something with the septic? Uh, I, I think it goes with the school. It's right. needed. It's well, needed eastman. Yeah, there's an existing right. septic. But we, you know, if there's no assurance that anything will ever be built on a second parcel, I mean, it, it's a building lot. If there's no septic there, it's a vacant building lot. That no, I understand. Be we will control the, the septic. <coughs> well, the septic would have to be removed from that lot. No, he, he, no. he has an easement to maintain Well, he has an easement unless we, unless we negotiate the easement differently. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like they need to go hand in hand. Yeah, and that's how my proposal is written. Okay. So, the, so you're not interested in lot one without lot two? No, I'm not. Right. You don't want to buy a vacant building lot? You sure? No, I mean, you know. Yeah. But, and remind me, I'm pretty sure you were offering for lot number one four figures. Four figures. Yeah. Was that a, I think it is for And I'm four pretty figures. sure that that was the same offer for the vacant building. Lot. It was. They were, the offers were identical. Yes. M my only concern there, and I, and I get the the need for one and two. Yep. But if I were the owner of that vacant lot, and I haven't done the the, the calculations on what that lot can and cannot be, whether it, you know there's mm -hmm. frontage for a house or. I'm probably going to try to sell that lot for more than a thousand dollars, and I, I guess my question is, and we have six of them in the room, or if you were a taxpayer in Waitley and we sold a vacant lot for a thousand dollars that perhaps could go for more. I mean, John, you know what vacant lots go for in Waitley? Well, hundred plus. Yeah. Just the, just the land. Yeah, but they don't have a right. for a second. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I'm off also nice. bringing to the table that I'm willing to invest three quarters of a million dollars right. into this building in order to raise the tax basis to a million or a million plus, perhaps. Um, right. I understand that. Right. I'm, just, I'm just processing all the different it's responses. Exa that, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the limitations on this lot are, are the, the right of of the owner of lot two here to maintain, repair, and replace the septic system, as well as there's a brook in the front corner of this property, so you're going to be 100 feet away from that. So you, you pretty much lose any really any buildable space except probably where you're close to. Right. Well, to I keep the septic here. I will say that if the if the town's looking at it from that perspective, then by me being able to acquire both lots actually opens up other potential on the site. Because now, if I were to control both lots, I would have access from Christian Lane. I could even potentially reconfigure the two lots uh, or create another access from this point in order to access a structure back here. So it's, it's really, there's, there's extreme advantageous view from controlling both lots from a development point of view. Sure, where sure. It's, it's sort of, you know, the long-term plan. This is a, this is a, a conceptual vision for what to do with this property that's done in approximately less than 30 days amongst managing other projects. So, you know, over the course of the discussion, this is by no means a final draft of what the project would go to permitting as. This is simply, you know, a proposal to get the discussion started with the town to help achieve the vision that I have for the property and then make sure it falls into line with what the town's vision for the property is as well. So um, that kind of ties back to what I, you know, I conceived of as, as offering the affordable housing units to try to offer something beyond just purchasing and developing the property. You know, the deed restriction typically lasts 15 years, so I'm locking in the price on those rents for 15 years, that's a significant economic contribution uh, to the project and towards meeting the town's goals for having, you know, meeting, meeting the affordability, uh, not only state requirements, but whatever 
uh, local, uh, you know, ideas you have towards that. But so your, your plan for for lot one is, with the school is to maintain the the uh, uh, the configuration of the school the way it is now. The building yes. will remain will look the same from the outside. The building basically. will look the same Unless from the outside. Basically, there may be a handicap ramp or some access or something that's done, but uh, depending on building code and what's required for the conversion. But yes, the the facade of the building, the building will remain the remain same. same. Yes, the basketball hoop probably goes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to update it. Keep that color blue though. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Okay, Joyce, you've been quiet. You have any? I've been quiet. I wrote. I wrote down. Wrote down three. things. Okay. I was kind of interested in. I mean, you, you kind of threw out a few things about yeah. what would happen, kind of, to the part where there's nothing built. And I understand there's a septic system somewhere on here that yeah. we can't yeah. necessarily build on top of. Um, there's a little baseball field there that I know we would lose, so we'd have to be looking at replacing that somewhere else in town. But you know, there's some black top around here. There's a little black top here. Was there? Um, I, mean, I guess what? What's the bigger picture? I don't. I don't know. You know, I, I haven't really had time to get that far with it. Um, you know, that's okay. that's sort of a, a long term. Uh, vision that would have to, you know, get flushed out. I think through the design process. I mean, right now, initially, it's to redevelop the schoolhouse, and then, you know, from you know, just just sort of this discussion. I think that mm -hmm. point came up. So, but there, there could be another way to, you know, that building wouldn't this the phase two wouldn't necessarily have to be a a row house. It could fit no. into the landscape it much be better, and, and yeah, and there would be a landscape plan and. In order to obviously go through some full site plan review with any project like this, where where those things get flushed out, yeah. and you know there's landscape views, there'd be topos done, there'd be uh, you know all the requirements of a of a site plan would be on there and identified, so that those questions can get answered. Yeah. So things like the the you might not necessarily stay. Um, Asphalt in all the places that are asphalt yeah, here. Exactly, it may not. That the parking change. may change. Parking yes. may change. Parking may change. Um, so um, the the next question is a math question, and I teach physics for a living. Mm -hmm. Just a fair warning. I um, I understand ten units would fit here, and then six units here. So I think if they both get built, I understand how to get twenty five percent of sixteen and get mm -hmm. it to be an integer, mm -hmm. right? But if it's just 10. It's hard to be 25% of 10 unless you have two and a half apartments. Right. Well, we, so, 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 so the, state, the state makes you round up. So it makes you round up. Makes you round up. Okay. So it would be three. If it was 10, it would be three. I think okay. it's 16 would be, or 18 would be five. Okay. So, um, and so this, it, six are drawn, but at some point I thought I heard somebody say eight. So it's not clear how many. Or, or did I think I the email that there? came back to me said something about 18. So I think that, I think we had. Okay. So up to six. six. Up yeah. to, up I, think, to eight. I think my proposal said six or. Yeah. Okay. And is it? I and mean, this is something I I have no idea. Have not been on a planning board or, or uh, I'm, I'm not familiar enough with bylaws otherwise. But 18 units on a piece of land this size is that actually? Is that something that would pass with our bylaws? Is that? Well, is there going to be a problem of too many units on one? Piece of property because there's all these various things about oh. you know one that you know acre lots and so on for houses but these would not be houses so that that's just something I don't I don't happen to know. Yeah. Well, you've got the 40B requirements that kind of supersede some of I don't know if it's some or all the town zoning requirements. So, all right, Catherine, it's, can you? It's not. It's not quite all. Speak this would in. not fit with our current bylaws and would likely either morph into a 40B or would have some sort of special zoning drawn up. And I think that's where there'd be some time up front to do some, have some discussions and do some negotiating. Yeah, because um, yeah, it, it doesn't really work with the, I took a little bit of a look and realized, for example, to do 10 units in the building under our current code would require 20 parking spots. I don't know if we would want 20 parking spots outside there and that's just like one tiny little thing I didn't bring 
my notes so with like me, two but per unit. per unit. So that's sort of assuming two people per unit, but they're one bedroom apartment. Right. So <clears> and, room. and would we even, like, maybe is do we think the market would mostly be students? And if it's a one bedroom apartment, you'd want one student, right? So, I mean, I don't think there would be a need necessarily for 10 based on that. Or so there's a lot of stuff like that to consider at all different levels. Well, the apartment um, could be close to that. I mean, Frontier had 15. It is true. They years, squeezed, so they used to squeeze those cars in. You couldn't park to go in there during uh, the day if you needed right. to. Plus, you got the basketball court. They used for yeah. Parking, so. And I'm sure you've run the numbers that, that the reason you come up with 10 in that building is that that's what you're. It's probably where the cost, right. where, we, where we need to be to make the right. money doing the project. Right. Yeah. And what's the. What's your average square footage going to be for the one bedroom? Have you thought about that? Uh, yeah. uh, these, uh, these little ones are 330 seven. square feet, these so small ones here. Yeah, yeah, there's a range from, I think, and the I don't remember from the, I figured out from the inside of the building as well. I think it was, was it a thousand square, well, what is one floor, 5,000? Well, take it, it's 30 eight, by 8,000 8, square feet. So they, they'd be pretty uniform is what you're saying. Yeah, basically the, uh, the classroom areas almost get turned into a unit. You know, it, it's uh, if you look at the the plans, we've got the yeah. north classroom, yeah. southwest classroom, west classroom. They sort of each become a residential yeah. unit. I think the larger cafeteria area oh, gets split in half. Um, so again, they're they're basically sort of open concept living areas. Um, yeah. You know, the bedrooms are are separated, but the living room and kitchens are open. You know, nice, nice bathrooms. I couldn't find a lateral dimension to figure out square footage for the ones in there. Yeah, we should have thrown it on no. in there, but inside. Uh, there's uh, oh, some across yeah. the top and you can come across the side. But there's a they, oh, they do scale no. out. Um, yeah, I this should have thrown the square footage on there for the units. And, and you, you, you would never consider condoizing any of these. You would want to run um, the show as apartments. You know. Uh, it's not a bad idea, but uh, I think up front, I like to maintain control of my projects to make sure that they get up and running and that it goes smoothly. And maybe down the road, we would, we would consider that. But I think uh, our business model sort of focuses on management and control of the property. Uh, and then we can make sure that it is maintained up to the right degree that you know the town wants and that, that I want as a business owner with my name on it um, you know once management is in place and the property has been uh, adjusted into the neighborhood then you know maybe 10 years down the road or, or, or who knows maybe when the market is right maybe that maybe that does make sense um, you know I'm, I'm not opposed to you know on affordable units I'm not opposed I don't know if there's limitations on age restrictions or not but I'm, I'm not opposed on that I mean you know my vision is to sort of help the community if people can't afford necessarily to be able to stay here they want to sell their home but they want to stay in town then there, there's an option for that for people and and I don't know if there are a lot of options right now for people in town so um, that was part of the our, of our thinking with this you know I think that the, the units would range the affordable units would range around 925 the market rate units would be around 1100 so again it, it sort of prices out students or some students I guess you know um, but the average one bedroom unit right now and in, in uh, the markets that I see range anywhere from 850 to 1200 for a one bedroom apartment and there's some in Montague. The Montague School was recently redeveloped. There's 22 units there that were rented before the building was complete, and those range in price from, uh, I believe, 11 up to 14 or 1500 per month. Uh, those are all all inclusive, I believe. Um, you know, one a couple of our properties are all inclusive as well. Uh, we provide you know everything: heat, hot water, electric, uh, and internet. So. Um, I think it's, you know, I feel strongly about the project. I think it's a good opportunity. I think it's a, you know, complicated building, the old schoolhouses to find a, a good reuse for them and residential conversion seems to be working all across the, straight, the state and, and the region actually. So it's a, it's a pretty good reuse for an aging building that's right now a liability. Well, it's a liability to the school district, which in turn is a liability to the town. It's, it's not, 
uh, you know, it's, it's a negative valued asset because it's costing the town, I, I don't know the exact number, but I would imagine it's around $50,000 a year to heat and maintain it. Um, I know we have similar buildings in Montague and the costs are upwards of that. So, um, so you, you, uh, you own all your all your properties that you that I manage. Yes. How many is that? Uh, I have about sixty units right now. And they are all rented. They're all rented, and we're renovating uh, uh, another twelve units. Uh, we've got some other some other projects on the board as well. So we'd and like you, to add this to the board. And these long term are your rentals like yearly, or are you rent by the month if somebody comes and goes? Or uh, primarily we do year leases. Year leases. Yeah. Yeah, I have uh, a sort of a property management division. The uh, asset manager from the Franklin Housing, uh, Franklin County Housing Authority is my uh, main operations manager. She was managing the housing authority for uh, their asset manager for 25 years. So she was managing upwards of 250 units for the housing authority. So she's come to work for my office, uh, primarily in the property management development side of our business. Okay, but you deal with, you don't deal with the Franklin County Housing, you deal with what, Montague? Uh, I deal with the Franklin County Housing Authority. We do a bunch of work for them through their uh, housing rehab grant program. Okay. I had um, one, or well, I had two questions really left. Um, uh, I know our housing committee looked at that building for um, putting in housing and they were not interested and in that didn't think it was going to be a good idea. So I was a little surprised to find that um, you have a what seems like a workable plan based on other things you've done. So maybe this would also, I'd like to invite the, the people from the housing committee to say um, why it is, and I, I know there's probably really good reasons, I just want to know what they are, why it is that it would not be something that the housing committee could develop into say low income or whatever category of housing, but uh, an outside contractor like Mr. Bear could do um, and make it work. Well, the, the big difference is for the town to do it would be public housing. Public funds. Versus public funds, funds, and you have more restrictions on the remodeling and, and, and building code aspects of it versus your private developer, right. private ownership of this is is different. Well, he doesn't have to obey the from, building code? Yes, he does. Oh, yeah, the but town would have to pay prevailing wage and put it out to stuff. state procurement. And we have to, to obey themselves. laws in addition to the building code, DHCD and fair housing laws. They're, they have additional building requirements, marketing requirements, rent monitoring requirements that make the whole thing very, very expensive. Oh, okay. And they don't even offer products in terms of loan products and financial products for things at a scale that would fit in that. We would have to have that and maybe two other buildings like it yeah. in the same town to apply for any kind of funding um, that would make it something that could work for affordable housing. Um, and and we, we couldn't pull that off in this town. Right? Yeah, There's nothing the, exists. The, the building, I the housing committee actually did a site review of it back yeah, in October, right. November. Yeah. Uh, we had the housing committee there. I think John was there, another contractor, uh, developer in town, and, and Frontier was there. And we looked through, and I guess it was decided there was there was so much work to be done to bring it up for public housing that it, it wasn't worth worth the expense to do it. That anybody that bought it for that would probably demolish the building and start yep. from scratch. Yeah. But. Uh, and, and that's an option, I guess, for yeah. you, but, but I'm glad to hear that you want to preserve and we want to preserve yeah. some of the, mm -hmm. the the facade of the building to make it look like that because it kind of fits in. It's been there for, what, over 100 years, so. And that building's happened. Yeah, that building. Really? Yeah, 1915. Well, 1915. Yeah. yeah, it's been over. 103. 103 years, yeah. so. Three is bigger. So You're going to lose the blue, though, right? We'll have to check the historical <laughs> records and see what so they say. I'm against us, this then. <laughs> you're not the losing the blue. Well, the blue shirt on yeah. so, so you're kind of helping us preserve a historic building, I guess, so, in a way you could well, say. Well, that's my next sort of uh, talking point, is right. that uh, I've actually done historical tax credits on six projects now in the town of Montague. Uh, I've 
I have worked with the town to create a historical district in the district of Millers Falls. Uh, we've got four, five, five buildings there that all qualify for historical tax credits as well as preservation tax credits through the federal government. Um, I would probably work with the town to try to get the designation on the building on the National Register so that it would qualify for those incentives. Uh, that's a big part of my business and, and how I operate by restoring and saving some of these old buildings. Are you listed uh, already or on the state? Maybe it's just listed on the state. I don't, could be on the I, state. I checked, yes. I checked a listing. I thought I went on the state yeah. website, but it's already, it's, it's listed. On, on the, the state website, already. interesting. Yeah. So yeah. that's a big part of it. We, we, uh, we've done that process and are familiar with how it works and uh, it's a big, incentive for us as a private developer to help offset some of our costs and to, in the end, deliver a nicer product to the community. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, I, I had one other question. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and, and this one, I'm not sure, I, I, I'm not sure how to, I, I might sound impolite, if I, if I do, I don't mean to sound impolite, but somewhere in the fine print here it says um, that, that you reserve the right to do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> and and I know you've got a track record and yeah. other things that um, and and I guess I was just kind of wondering about that. What what could you anticipate finding that would make you say, I'm not doing this. I got to do something else with it. Well, if I don't put that in there, it doesn't leave me any room to deviate from the submittal that I I submit to the town. So okay. by putting that in there, it allows me to change my or to make adjustments okay. pending our negotiation and what we. Uh, are able to come to terms with. So um, it also allows me that if if we were in process and I was approached by, say, uh, a regional organization or, or some uh, division of, I mean, Whaley's an agricultural town, if there was some entity that wanted to take up office space in that building, and it was a uh, viable option that I wanted to pursue and it made sense uh, with the town's vision that it would allow us to adapt our plan to meet those needs. So it, it you know, allows us some flexibility from a development point of view that um, if a better use comes along, then we wouldn't necessarily want to be locked into something that's not <coughs> as great of a use. Okay. Yeah, I remember seeing it in there too. Yeah. It, the last sentence. Yeah, I, I was paraphrasing. Yeah. 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 No. It, it was right at the point where you said, I, we'll try our best to be energy efficient as possible, but <laughs> yeah. our best. Right. I, I would encourage you to stick with that. The yeah. town. Anybody care if I speak for the town? We have a real commitment to energy efficiency. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. The, yeah. So, do, so do we as a company. So. Right. So. Okay. So I have a solar farm back here. I'm not opposed to a solar structure. I mean, that's a, yeah. definitely a consideration for the site, okay. depending on you know if it fits yeah. into the aesthetics and. Okay, I'd like to open it up to the, the audience here, the neighbors, voters, taxpayers that are all here. Uh, uh, butters. I think most of these are butters. I've, I've been wild one or two, but. Uh, Richard, you, yeah. you raised your hand first. You had some. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, Richard Tolberg. I'm, I'm on the housing committee, but I'm not speaking in any way for the committee. I'm just speaking as a, as a, as a citizen. Actually, I'd like to drill into comments that both Mr. Edwards and Ms. Um, Fortune made. So let's talk about, and I'm a actually talking to the select board. The. If this were a private party transaction, me selling something to Bob, I don't care what he does with the property once he's bought it. I, he gives me his money, he can do what he will. Mm -hmm. This is a, a public land. I think the town has a right and obligation to know what will be done. I agree, I, I, I like the proposal, so yeah. I'm, I'm, again, I'm speaking only as my own person, I'm not speaking. Um, but I would like to see some actual agreement over and above the deed rider where Mr. Obear agrees to purchase the property at a certain price and he also agrees to develop it in a certain way 
at a certain within a certain period of time so that we don't have the situation this is one one other reason I think that the housing committee had problems with the property is there are a lot of unknowns in there this is a rehab rehabs have unknowns um, there could be all kinds of you know hazardous stuff and so it could very well be that you get into this situation and problems occur and so I think the town could very well enter into an agreement in addition to the um, uh, the deed rider for the for the three properties that says what you'll do yeah. when you'll do it it's above and beyond zoning zoning just says what you can't right. do that, that that is pretty standard and, okay and it wasn't so, really and this is something you're proposing to do he, well it wasn't really discussed in the town's uh, rfp which which i was sort of surprised at because right. I've, I've responded to several rfps sure. in other towns and almost always there's a developer's agreement as well as a real estate contract right. so you're, you're familiar there's, right. there's yeah i'm familiar with with it. it's a recorded document it holds the developer to the specifics of a plan with just that a timeline and you know there's there's caveats where we can get extensions or if there's some flexibility to it but it is a basic structure of what I the developer is agreeing to do and the town is part of that and signing off so um, in in other projects we have worked with under developers agreement it's and pretty this, standard this also protects the town Absolutely. Uh, in, in the event down the road, an office person does come to you mm -hmm. and says, I'd like to do this kind of thing. The town has the right, you know, you, you then come I have to, to come to the town, you have to come say, to the town well, and say, well, adaptive, we'd like to submit, right, you know, right. we'd like to change the end use, you know, the value's still gonna be there, the tax basis is still there. So I'd, I'd like to urge the town to sort of yeah. try to get, <clears throat> enter into that. Yeah, before um, we, before we leave, <clears throat> So that uh, you gotta remember, Frontier owns a building. So yeah. Mr. O'Bear is proposal is to buy the building. That's right. Frontier, not Wayland. Well, mm -hmm. He's buying. That's, uh, proposing to buy. But the town lot. could still enter well, into that's, developers. That's building. how the town right. leverages your other lot. Right. 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 You say, so, well, I'll give you the lot, but you have to develop. We have to come to agreement right. on the development, development of the project. Right. So right. that's why it's smart for you to want to sell me both parcels because it's that's that's how you can sort of that's so, your, those are your cards that you're holding right so so once frontier agrees to to sell the property to mr fair which we don't i don't think they made a decision yet on that but once and if they do then it's up to the town to deal with him with the planning zoning boards and building inspector and whatever to make sure what is built there meets code requirements and and all town zoning bylaws but, the, but there can be an agreement I'm talking about is beyond that yeah it's well, beyond zoning it's beyond anything of that sort and i think you fully understand that. absolutely yeah, and it's, it, it's a case where the condition of approval of our sale could be entering it so right and tip, typically with a developer's agreement there's an end sign off where i would come back to the planning uh, i'm sorry back to the select board and say i've come you know I've, I've achieved substantial completion of my project as proposed there would be a sign off issue that's recorded and, and the developer's agreement goes away um, that's typically how it's done how, or how we've done it in the past so so, that's so you would not object to having a developer's agreement i don't object to that at all no that's great okay richard right, continue the, the next question can i think of i think mr edwards brought it up the market study mm -hmm. or the market analysis um you you gave a wonderful answer but it would be helpful i think for the town because obviously if for some extraordinary reason this goes sideways there's going to be a lot of unhappiness and so it would be useful for the select board to have a market analysis of some sort that you can help you make the decision that we're going to be entering into this agreement and that the building will not end up vacant or you know whatever happens if there is no market if the market's not there I'm, I'm quite sure that those studies exist that if, they've probably if, been done at the regional level with the, the Franklin County I think uh, Council. Yeah, Franklin Council. I, I know that those studies have been done. Montague has their own in place that they have done, but there are regional studies that have been done. I think those numbers are all pretty well substantiated. It, it, it should be site specific yeah. because obviously, in general, there are hundreds of people, but in specific. Mm -hmm. 
And so it doesn't have to be a huge story. It has to be somebody with credentials who takes a look at this particular piece of property mm -hmm. and says, yes, I think the market at $1,100 a month for a one bedroom shows an absorption rate of, you know, three units per month, therefore you should be able to lease up in three months. Yep. Is that something that... I'm pretty confident in those numbers that I'm willing to take the risk, so... Um. Then my other question, well, just a comment, actually. This is a this is a intense density increase in the neighborhood. Um, do you have any recent numbers on average daily trips for a one bedroom? Yeah, it's it's not as high as you would think. You <coughs> ask the same question. I think it, it's I believe it's it's maybe around five or six. You know, it, it's it's really not that high for a one bedroom. Uh, unit. Okay. Uh, we, we were, I, I don't have it fresh in my mind, but it is much lower than you might imagine. Uh, we, we were asked the same question for the building in Miller's Falls uh, that we did. It was a seven unit building, and I think it was, it was like 27 vehicle trips or something. You know, it, it wasn't an absorbent number. You think, you know, typically someone's going to work and coming home and maybe going out once or twice, you know. Um, so if you count all those all those trips twice, once once out and once in, you know you're you're at six or seven trips average per unit. Um, so well, I think I, I personally think that's a little high. It, it, it definitely so may be four trips per unit. Uh, you get ten units. That's forty additional trips on River Road and on Christian Lane. Uh, if you add the exit on the Christian Lane, maybe that gets more yeah. traffic on that somewhat larger street. Um, so that makes sense. The, my final comment picks up on the, the cost of the land. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's kind of a black box is we don't know the cost of development. And obviously, you know, they, you, uh, you put 700000 in and there's something else. But it would be helpful, I think, for the select board to know how the $1,000 was arrived at. In other words, simply a pro forma analysis that says, this is my cost, this is my financing, these are my uh, offsites, these are my soft costs. I think we had a pro forma. This proposal. is the income I expect to get. The difference is the cost of the land. And I think that would be very helpful for you all. If somebody comes up to you and says, wait a minute, you sold that for a grand? Well, that's what I was getting yeah, at. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd pay you two grand. You know, they, did, they so, didn't submit a proposal. Though. I know, I know. <laughs> they, could, they could have. You're talking reality versus politics. They could have. That's the but politics are something we have to deal with. That's something these guys have to deal with. It's sort of like like modern art. So I, I think it would be helpful. I, I briefly looked at this. I'm, I'm not saying it's not there, but it would be helpful if you did some kind of an analysis that says I'm paying a grant because that allows me to have a legitimate return on investment. Right. Uh, it, it induces me to do this. I'm not going to do it for fun. No. Absolutely not. We do enjoy doing it, however. I know you we, do. <laughs> we've done enough um, practice. So, so the, the select board might want to think about that. Um, I had a question about septic. I am not the person to talk about septic because this is my first house I ever had <coughs> septic. But is there going to be enough space for septic if there is enough space? There, there is enough space. Yes. Okay. Yeah, for the reserve area as well. That's that's part of the reason for the <coughs> wanting the second lot is to be able to have a reserve area for okay. a future replacement of septic uh, or expansion of the existing one if it's if it's needed. Uh, um, two comments last. One is that this may be a very small project. It may not be worth their time but it might be helpful to have uh, Mass Development take a quick look at this. I think that they do they do provide, you know, technical assistance. I work with Mass Development. Okay, so does yeah, that work for you? Yeah, there, yeah. I'd definitely be pursuing that on this project. Yeah, and just have them say, yes, this makes sense, or? Uh, they work a little, it's a little more hands-on yeah. when they get involved, but it, ah. it's, uh, there's, it's, it's more, the modus is on me to pursue what they have for resources. Okay. Well, I, I'm actually making the suggestions to, to the select board 
that if you if you want to have a third party on if you're just just interested look at this um, and I don't know how that work would work out or what bureaucracy you're starting to get yourselves in there you said it's called mass development and then my final question is and I think I got half the answer the schedule we're having a meeting tonight that the next meeting will be at the town possibly meeting. possibly yeah. we're, we're kind of waiting for frontier to do something right okay and we hope it's by annual town meeting and i guess there is some more articles proposed on this we don't know if we're going to go through well, them or not okay. and you have, i don't know if you say we i'm not sure that i'm not sure that i feel like you need to get it done to the annual town meeting because it can be a special town meeting but right. it does have to be a town meeting right and we don't have to feel like we're under pressure to get this done in two weeks Right. before we have answers to questions. So that's really where, we, where we're at. We're two weeks from town meeting. Right, right. but, but the, other, the, the other thought of, of why bring it up in annual town meeting, even if we're not ready to act on it, is to get input from the public. <coughs> I mean, we could have anywhere from 35 to 100 people there. Uh, that's the time to ask people. We can say we're not deciding today, but what are your comments? What are your views? What do you think we should do? That's an opportune time to do it, and I would hate to not discuss it at all because oh, no, we're not I, ready or yeah, because yeah. Frontier hasn't yeah. submitted it. I don't advocate that, but I don't advocate yeah. saying we have to decide by this no, time. No, no, we're not saying that. That's I, I really right, So is, is, is there a plan to reach out to Frontier and say, hey, what are you guys thinking about? We've uh, had discussions with you. Go ahead. I was going to email them tomorrow and say that I met with the select board and that we hadn't heard back. and. Brian, I think it should be Brian to what else. Brian and I have been meeting already with him, so Brian, go ahead if you want to. We met. We met once when they had their when they had their first look at this, um, and I don't know exactly what. I, I don't know exactly what was decided. I know that they want to move forward. Um, well, I can say nothing was nothing, nothing. was finally decided. That was their first. That was their first look at it. Just like we're getting our first look at it. But is it on their? Do you get a sense that it's on their front burner? Yes. Okay. And and I think well, Brian sent an email reminding him last week of the legal requirements of submitting a, something to us and uh, kind of the requirements for the first right of refusal because that's kind of the second or third step. That their first step is deciding what to do with the proposal, and then the second is. Probably right. contacting us with the first right of refusal. Right. Okay. And we haven't seen or heard anything on them, but but Brian and, and myself have been contacting them and reminding them and telling them you need to do this. And we've got a meeting coming up. If we wanted an annual town meeting, you need to do something. So, but but again, we're not forcing the issue for annual meeting. But it, it would be ideal if it could have happened. <coughs> but and, and that was our plan. I guess I said Brian and I have been meeting with Frontier in this last last fall, October, November. Brian developed a proposal RFP back in October to go out. We were hoping to get bids back in January and have time to discuss this and, and it would have been an opportune time for for our annual meeting to hear all comments and, and, and to take action on it. Well I guess I will say Frontier has been dragging their feet on all of this. They want to get rid of it soon, as soon as they can and offer to give it to us, but yeah, when we want to go through the formal process, it's like, well, wait, we're not ready. We, we've got to wait a month or two. Or we hear, well, we've got school vacation next week, so we can't meet, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian, here's, a, here's an idea, and this could be a real stupid idea. Please feel free to tell me it's yeah. stupid. But if Frontier comes to us to exercise our right of first refusal, we say, no, we'll buy it for $1,000, and then we got one entity to deal with on this. We don't have to but, worry about whether school's in session or not. But the thing is, then we have to advertise for proposals. A second time? Well, we don't have it we, first time. That, we, first, that we proposal have, went to Frontier. If, if we own a building from Frontier, we have to advertise again for proposals. Okay. So you're saying so that, that's, why it's, board. that's why it's a stupid idea. Yeah, we're because back to, well, I like that technically, <laughs> we're back to the drawing board again if we do that. And okay. I don't think we're going to gain anything. Okay, right. I just thought it, it yeah. might be a way well, to get it so that there's only one entity, entity to deal involved. with. Right. And that might make things go 
be you know, be more responsive on a, on a time scale. That's a world. Can I make a suggestion that Brian get back to us with any feedback that he gets from Frontier post haste, and then and then we can figure out whether the schedule works for town meeting or whether we're going to need to. Because I do get choices point. I mean, town meeting is really right around the corner. Yeah. Um, that being said, if it can happen, it can happen. If it can't. So it does. I, I would personally wouldn't push the town. Yeah. You know, I think that these things take some time, and I, I certainly don't have expectations to start this project or to do this project this summer. I mean, I, I imagine potentially the fall, but more more than likely it would be a spring project yeah. for us. You know, it would take some serious planning and permitting and uh, more planning. Right. <laughs> so it, right. What would be your, just <clears throat> curious and just your best estimate, I know you need to do a design. If you started in spring, when would you expect to be renting a year from then? Yeah, maximum probably. of a year, a year, probably less than that. Yeah. I, would, I would shoot for six to eight months. Yeah. Okay. I, just as an aside, if you were to start this project, would you be able to do construction next spring that would allow some use of that softball field next to the building in the spring? <laughs> um, potentially. potentially. <laughs> I'm just asking, I just, it's, for planning it's, purposes. It's feasible. If you said no, okay, that's fine. It's just it's, it's for planning purposes. Yeah. It's feasible. Okay. You don't want to waste that back. I'm meeting the frontier tomorrow. It's Anything's possible. They're capital improvement. Yeah, can agree to the final hour. So I could like ask what they're doing with this people as long as possible. We've been meeting every month. Okay. You appointed me to represent the board okay, and our okay. capital improvement committee. That's right. I did. Right? Yeah, so, there we go. Okay. So, I think okay. we can beat this thing down. Yeah. Well, no, I, we um, have up here, I think. Some more questions. Do we have any more questions from the audience here? Anybody else? I'll leave it up to you. Yeah, John. I mean, I think what Bob's proposing here is, is very doable, and I think the town ought to take a hard look at it. You know, from a been there, done that standpoint, I know what's involved. Um, he's sticking his neck out there basically. And the thousand dollar thing, I think that's, that's good. That's probably more than it should be. <laughs> I think that people, people often yeah, think I mean, like they you hear just all don't know buy what something you're going to run into. Yeah. He's got to get rid of that boiler in there. Yeah. You know, he's got zoning things to deal with, structural engineering well, stuff to deal with. All the reasons and, why our housing committee couldn't do it. As, I mean, maybe exactly. there's extra reasons exactly. why they should, right. but Having an individual, you know, non-public person doing this makes a hell of a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think the benefit to the town in the long run is going to be there. Yeah. You know, and it sounds like he's done enough. He's got his ducks in a row. And I think it'd be a no-brainer. And I would hope that the school committee would make a decision soon. I remember going through that building and they wanted to get rid of it before last heating right. season. That's right. right. You know, right. and come on guys, let's get off the pot here and do it. <coughs> you want to cut their losses yeah. and yeah. they haven't cut anything. Yeah, I mean, his possibly a sprinkler system might be involved oh, in there and all that. So yeah, it'll have to be for yeah, sprinkler. Have... No, and, and don't get, our questions aren't the same that we're against, we just have to ask the questions. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to get the public to realize that it's yeah. not us it's holding not. it up by the thing either. I think we'll be able to play this back later when we need to, we'll right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's going to run on a loop. Yeah, that's right. I think yeah. that is more initially people hear that thousand dollar price tag and they think that, oh, you're giving away the farm, yeah. but the reality is that they don't understand what's really involved with the cost of a project like this, is that it, it's it's a smart project, but there's significant risk for me as the developer. I mean, I'll be lucky if my costs aren't 100,000 per unit or plus, but you know, with creative financing, with uh, tapping into the resources that are there, certain uh, state and federal incentives, uh, I can offset some of my costs to get it to a point where the project is feasible. So, you know, all those things come into play, but that's, that's a, 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 mi a mix for success that takes, you know, effort and staffing and, you know, some resource to throw at. So it's, you know, we're spending money on the project sort of that's out of like the initial peripheral view of what people see. So when you when you think about that thousand dollar sale price, it's really much more. Than, it's really offsetting much more money that's being spent behind the scenes to make the project go. Um, you know, it would be realistic that we would have you know 
eighty or ninety thousand dollars invested in this project before we even put a shovel into the ground, uh, just in terms yeah, of planning and, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. exactly um, administrative time and planning. And, okay. Yeah, John, John brings up a, a good John point. It's time to see what he does, and we got another school building now. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. 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 There you go. It's got to be a restaurant. Well. You know, it's got to be a restaurant. It's in a small print. It's yeah. buy one get one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think John, yeah. John brings up. There are some other issues up there. Yeah. John brings up a good point. Sure. There, there's more benefit to the town than the thousand dollars or whatever oh, for, for buying the yeah. or selling the, the parcel the town owns. I mean, there's right. the tax revenue. There's having somebody actually be there to build a, 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 at the parcel and doing something yeah. with it. Yep. And it's someone who's going to gonna the then town. also is making commitment to tending commitment. to the parcel. Yeah, right. right. Fully tend, fully right. committing to that. When right. we walked through. We all sort of shook our heads and said, wow, it's going to take somebody special to like want to put some effort into this to really get something out of it. And we don't know what we'll get. We were clear that the town wasn't going to be able to swing it. And I think that at least the people I spoke to after that walkthrough, we all agreed we'll be lucky if we have anyone who has a sincere proposal that's willing to make an effort. And I, I'm just as a resident saying I, I, I'm happy that something like this has shown up and I think we're lucky and I think some people might not agree with that assessment that are in town and they may react strongly to a, a large project right in terms of scale we'll see what yeah, happens he's already kind of proven himself to that's right the old cyano property on river oh. road i mean there's oh, a lot yeah, of things no. happening there quick yeah, really, and, really nice i mean that properties like that is where we need people like bob to come in that's right and it's rehab super. Yeah. Especially an old school like this, you know, where That's my daughters right. went to school, and probably half the people in our room that live in town went to school. So, I, think no, no, it's I, great. I actually right. appreciate completely what, what you're saying from leaving out the proposal. Right. Okay, moving okay. on. Is anybody else, Dan or Eddie or Bill, any comments? No. Okay. Right. Bob, you have any last comments you want to make? I don't think so. And I think we'll be in contact with you. Thanks, Bob, very much. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate the time. <coughs> you guys ought to reach me if you have any other questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Okay, old business, uh, town hall project update discussion. Brian? Find my notes here. So just just a quick update. Fred and I had a, a site meeting last Monday. Um, the rough end of the electrical is complete. The mechanical rough end is nearly complete. The rough end for the plumbing in the building um, is complete, and the backup panels installed in the restrooms. Um, the hardwood flooring is being patched in. Um, where, where it needed to be taken out, where it didn't exist in the first place. And I think they were at about 90% of the drywall has been hung and taped. Um, they were waiting on some decisions from the building inspector in terms of fire rating and things like that. Um, but it, it's still moving right along on the inside. Um, I don't think any exterior work has, any exterior site work has begun yet. No. Um, and one, one thing we, we did do is, uh, came from our, I guess the results of our building committee meeting. We had a thermal imaging done of the building, believe it or not, to yes. see if there's any gaps in insulation or no uh -huh. insulation. I did that. Our, yeah. our fire department has equipment to do that. Our physics and department has equipment to do that. <coughs> yeah. do. Okay, well, right. Keith went from our. our Everyone's got capacity. They did that, yes. <laughs> and he didn't find anything unusual other, between, other than where the first and second floors meet, and there's a beam there that. You, just can't insulate any more than what is so but all the gaps they're aware of and it will be filled but he didn't find anything so that was a positive that's good positive i'm happy sense. to hear that our energy committee will be here too right. yeah. so, i have one comment on you're still on that subject sure go ahead yeah Fred, i see in um this 11.01 they're talking about not doing the septic line to the three lines that are buried in the easement right and if I remember right, that back parking lot is part of phase one, right. part of the original bid, because right. they have to dig up the septic tank for the uh, Smike's house and build up the covers because right. there's two parking spaces there. Right. 
So it doesn't make sense to even consider not doing that. Well, we're, we're, that was, uh, we haven't decided on that. We're looking at, we're hoping to get a cost from the contractor, what that would be, because if, if we don't get the extra money to complete the project, that may be one option to find more money. That's why we're looking at it. I can't, imagine, I can't imagine a trench that's maybe 70 or 80 feet long yeah. underneath the parking lot that you're digging up anyway to right. put pavement on. Right. Is it going to make that much of a difference? And say the septic system that's there fails in 10 or 15 years, you're going to dig up that parking lot to do it anyway. Well, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Well, the, the changes, John, so far have not been as reasonable as we expected because of, of going through the, the dealing with the subs and the main contractor, there's all of these add-ons and whatever. So no. uh, we, don't, we have no idea what this is gonna cost, be a cost savings, if any. If it's very minimal, we'll, we'll leave it in. If it's a lot, then we may consider it if we don't have enough money to complete the project. That's kind of, we haven't decided on that. There's no final decision yet on that. But that was one item we could, we thought we could, save money on if we had to. So, yeah. Okay. Just think it makes sense to do right. it now. Uh, you have right. equipment there and digging it up. Right. Them off. right. Okay. <clears throat> Brian, anything else in it? No, we're also, no. we're also having discussions with, with the post office because the post office where the truck delivers now is going to, you know, it's going to be turned into a pedestrian way, so. Yeah. We're, we're trying to figure out operation. We'll work with them operationally to see how they can just just, just to make sure that yeah. the layout works for them. Right. Okay, new business. Uh, discuss annual town meeting warrant articles. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. okay. This is going to be like what? Eight, 12 minutes tops. Probably. Well, yeah. I don't know. I've been doing this now for, this is my 14th town meeting, and I don't ever recall seeing 46 articles on a town meeting one. Pretty good, huh? Is that good or bad? Yeah, I'm really it? impressed. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put in some extra ones, too. The cost per article must be really low. Yeah. All right, so let's plow forward. Okay. Article one, here are the annual reports. I have a huge issue with them. I'll summarize these, how about that? Okay. Yes, yeah. we'll go over the it's, important ones. Stop me when you, when you, so, okay, well, feel free to stop you on behalf of Yeah, Article 2, borrow money, anticipation of revenue. Article 3, authorize town treasurer to open compensating balance agreements with banking institutions. Article 4, accept, expend any federal, uh, state, or private grant monies. Article 5, set the spending limits for the town's revolving funds, which is the same as FY18. Article 6 is amending the purpose of the the cordwood sales revolving fund to allow maintenance on trees on town property. Before it just used to allow the, the tree warden to plant trees, but not maintain them. Okay. Good. Article seven, um, this is an, an amendment to a general bylaw. Uh, under cur uh, currently the, the tax collector can withhold, um, can withhold permits for taxes that are in arrears for over 12 months. There was a change in the state law that um, allows uh, the tax collector to hold um, uh, permits. permits for taxes that are uncollected for less than 12 months. So any, any uncollected taxes, any overdue taxes. Um, there was a change in the law, so we're just changing our bylaw to reflect that. Article 8, that's the salaries of compensation of elected officers. That's what was approved during our yeah. budgeting. Article 9 is the Enterprise Fund, 167,945. Okay. Um, Article 10 is the operating budget. So just, just to fill you in on quickly yeah, the, uh, the insurance of what's happening with the insurance trust there's a there's a meeting tomorrow of the insurance trust and there's been some pressure put on the trust to rescind the plan changes that they've made so which in turn has saved the town approximately well, if we take out the payment we need to make around twenty thousand dollars in premiums 
there's there's some pressure for the, the trust to change and rescind those um, changes that they've made. And really the only op the only other alternative, because timing is so short, is that they would go back to the old plan. The old plan meaning what we have this fiscal year. Right. And but, the but premium increases would, would be would be would be greater. Um, there's a finance committee meeting last night to discuss this and they wanted to budget for that full amount. Uh -huh, um, because we can always ask for a reduction on the town floor, but we, could we ask can't, for ask, a, for a, can't uh, ask for an increase. Uh, you, we, I think we could do it within, within reason, right. um, but uh, their feeling was to, was to budget for the higher amount at this point, and later on, either that money flips to free cash, or we, we can always have a special town meeting. What's your crystal ball tell you is going to happen? Um, I think the I think the big enough players probably don't have their ducks in a row that they'll probably vote to rescind the changes. They are going to vote to rescind. That would be my guess because some of the I don't I, I know some of the towns haven't are not um, they haven't done their they have not followed day. their schedule. They are not going to meet the sixty day notice, and there's been threats or veiled threats that those towns who who don't meet that requirement. Or would be liable for unfair, unfair uh, labor practices because they're charging other insurance and what that, in theory, what was collectively bargained. Um, and the, and they're not the, the insurance trust is not willing to, uh, well, offer two different plans: one for the people who have their poop in a group like us, right. <laughs> um, and one for the people who couldn't manage the schedule. They're, they're, that's not, that's, that's on not the, on the table. That's not really on the table. Right. They're not big enough to offer two plans. Okay. They're really only big enough to offer. Yeah. So what line item is that in here in the, in the budget? Could you tell me? That's under that? insurance and benefits. Um, yeah. Second one down, group health it's insurance. Group health insurance. Okay, yeah. that's why it went up so yep. much. <clears throat> yeah. And I think that's I think that's a wise approach to for the finance committee to take at this point. Our insurance, we always estimate what our insurance costs will be. We don't know what happens during open enrollment. Um, that's right. We have some sense out there that there may be some some folks interested in coming on the plan. So a little extra money there is not going to not necessarily a bad idea. So the <clears throat> unless you were going to go through this item by item, and I don't think you are. So that increase of. Seventy of uh, seventy thousand dollars yeah. is bumping our overall change percentage-wise. It doubles it almost. It doubles it. Yeah, it goes from one thirty-eight or one forty down to seven. So it goes from three yeah. three and a half to six eight eight. Three and a half, yeah. Is that is my math right, Brian? The bottom line oh, of operations. I'm just looking at the 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 the. the Total town operations. The variance between FY18 and 19. Total town for total town operations? Yeah. No, for, yeah, yeah. Right, 70,000 70, of that 177. Right, so, so that's. 72,000 of that. that the the percent was going to be about 3.5, and now it's about six, almost 7. Yeah. For, for the overall. Are, 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 the, are these the new numbers in here? So we're not looking at total, opera, total town operations. Total town operations. Yeah, total to total town back. operations. The, the bottom line. What, yeah. was, what was discussed at the finance committee last, last night was an increase of about $19,000. Right. So that, that $70,000 is not the increase from just now. Is it, that's, we, would, we had an increase already in there before this came. Right. I get that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I see that in the math. So the insurance comes up to $19,000. <clears throat> Change. That would be the impact of, the impact. but it would be it would be yeah. shy of twenty one hundred as opposed to twenty one and a half. So I'm just looking at it. It, it means that our town operating budget will increase by six point eight percent as opposed to, or so almost six point nine percent as opposed to about three point five percent. Am I not doing the math? You're, you're, you're talking. To, you're talking. Town operations. I'm talking town there's, operations. Send me a. You turn the following page, and there's total operating budget. 
I, I, which and includes that would have been other things, right? Other things, right? And that is only I guess that. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. So if you took seventy thousand out of that, yeah, that you're going to cut that down to what two percent? From one seventy-seven to say a hundred thousand. Okay. It's going to be what two percent, maybe, in that area. Right, for the total total operating budget. I, 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 I get it. I'm just looking at ten yeah. operations. It just, yeah. it's, it's making it look pretty big. Right, but that's that's two million out of a almost five million budget. Yeah. Right, that's not an insignificant part of the budget. No. <clears throat> no. Okay. okay. All right. Ready to go on? Yeah. Right. Ready to call what, eleven? Article 11, so the Finance Committee, the changes the Select Board recommended at its last meeting to move the for additional 40000 into the Vehicle Stabilization Fund and then vote out the, the, um, the, the uh, four-wheel drive rescue and transport vehicle, they, they were fine with that, they agreed with that. Okay. Um, so that's what Article 11 is, 65000 free cash to vehicle stabilization. Article 12 is um, a transfer from the vehicle from the ambulance stabilization fund to the vehicle stabilization fund. That almost depletes that account. Was that our plan? Yeah. Yeah. We had 61 and 65 to the vehicle stabilization. You had 136,000. Yeah. On 26. <coughs> 26. And I forget what we're spending for eighty-five or something. Aren't we? We're taking ninety thousand. Ninety out of that. Yeah. Out of it. Okay. Article thirteen to so transfer the sum of one hundred forty thousand um, from the Mill River account into the stabilization fund. To re I should say, return that money to the stabilization account. Mm -hmm. So it's going from one stabilization account to another. No, because we don't need it in the meme emergency. This has caused a lot of confusion. It's poorly worded. It's it's the Mill River River Bank stabilization, as in shoring up the river bank. Okay, that's it's, so an, that's it's an unfortunate right. term. It's and not it's money that will, that will not be needed <laughs> right. in that project. They're, they're right. still stabilizing the bank. And the <laughs> they're stabilizing everything. What bank are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> that'll okay. leave um, that'll leave around twenty thousand dollars in the account in that in the Mill River <clears> account. Um, there's still yeah. pending, at some point there still needs to be a site visit from the Army Corps of Engineers um, yeah. to, to look yeah. at that. So what will that put in our stabilization account? Um, we had 140 of that money, it was money that we had to pay out mm -hmm. in order to get reimbursed, so this is a reimbursement? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a partial reimbursement, yeah. Yeah. We paid it out of That will put right now there is three hundred and fifty nine, right? Yeah, right there. Balance remaining, yeah. So it'll be it'll put it up to five. General stabilization. No, that's including that. That's that includes it? That includes the 140? Yes. Our general stabilization right now is at $219,000. Oh, okay. Well, let's say 220. So that'll put us around to 359. 359. So we're at 7%. Okay. That's for our general stabilization. Here. Right. Then there's the capital and. Yeah, I get that. Next one is uh, two hundred thousand dollars to reduce the tax levy. Fifteen is so now we're into the capital projects. Seven thousand for the plow for the Ford F five fifty. Twelve thousand seven hundred for the um, highway department lawnmower. Um, Twenty five thousand for the um, highway garage roofing. Forty five thousand from vehicle stabilization for a new police cruiser. $40,000 from vehicle stabilization for the um, rescue and transport vehicle. And then the off chance that the earlier moves to vehicle stabilization don't pass, then we pass over those. 
but I don't expect that to happen. We, yeah, we may have to amend those if. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Six thousand dollars for the fire detection system at the fire station. Forty-five thousand for the sprinkler repairs at the elementary school. Um, One hundred and two thousand um, to be expended for the rehabilitation of the town hall. Eight thousand um, dollars for HVAC um, system repairs at town offices. Um, Thirty-five thousand for repairs um, to the town office roof. Thirty-five hundred. Thirty-five hundred. I say thirty-five thousand. Yeah, it actually is thirty-five hundred written. Yeah. Yeah, thirty-five hundred is written. Thank you. Uh, to transfer the sum of um, one thousand eight hundred dollars uh, for the baseball field adjacent to the fire station <coughs> for fencing, five thousand dollars for um, lighting upgrades at the library, six thousand for the purchase of a new lawnmower for the cemeteries. Um, Twenty-eight is. Um, $4,004 for the town share of the Frontier Regional School District um, replacement tractor. Um, just so that people are aware, because of the, um, how do I say this without getting angry at the White House? Um, <laughs> because of the War with China. Um, the amount of fence you get is going to be dramatically smaller for that eighteen hundred dollars than than uh, than was originally cost out. So we'll have to look at whether that eighteen hundred dollars does the sufficient job or not. Well, it's usually like twenty five percent less, right? Probably. Yeah. I mean, the the the, the well, with the tax, yeah. It, it, the tariff stuff is, is, I've been talking to fence people, the tariff stuff is, just steel is just so much more expensive now. And it, should, it should only be 25% more expensive. It shouldn't be doubling and tripling. No, it won't, I didn't say it would double. Yeah, right. I'm just saying that. Well, so much more is 25% then. I'm sorry? Yeah, so much more means 25% in this case. Okay. Four, so we may have to find money to finish that project at some point. Okay. Um, Article 29, $20,000 um, to be spent for the Whitley 250th anniversary celebration. Um, Article 30, transfer the sum of $7,500 um, for health plan change reimbursements. So depending on what happens right. tomorrow at the trust meeting, we may table that article because if we go back to the old, yep. old changes, then we won't need it. Um, Article 31, $3,000 to pay for the crew benefits of a departing town employee. 32, Article 32 are the CPA um, transactions. 6,000 for uh, administrative expenses, 12,000 to the open space reserve, 12,000 to the affordable housing reserve, and 47,000 to the budgeted reserve. These are recommended by the CPC. Article 33 is the sum of $30,000 of CPA funds. Continue the work of the restoration of historic grave markers at the town cemeteries. And Article 34 is up to $93,000 to put towards the borrow CPA back borrowing for the town hall project. 35 is a special legislation request to allow John Hannum, the town of Whitley fire chief, to work beyond the age of 65. Article 36, 37, and 38 are the road acceptance articles for Gray Oak Lane, Eastwood Lane, and Francis Way that it were previously laid out by the town. The articles accomplish two things. It accepts, it asks residents to vote to accept the layout of the select board, and it also uh, authorizes the select board to acquire the an interest in the real property in the roadways. So we need to, the voters need to accept the layout and then we need to authorize the select board to acquire the actual interest in the property. Where did you say that in these? Purchase the land that purchase, the is on? Purchase the, at yeah. the easements? I think in this case, I think the plan is that it would be donated. Right. Okay. So we have changed all the deeds. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
We have to file three so filing, charges for, fees, for all three. Yeah. But filing fees, don't they go into the uh, community preservation fund? <laughs> so we win. I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Um, let's let's skip Article 39, Article 40 for a second and talk about that at the end. Does that sound good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Article 41, because we're on such a roll. Article 41 <laughs> is to impose a local sales tax of 3% on recreational marijuana. Because that's the biggest we can do. 3% is the most that's we can do. Yep. Okay. It's, it's a local opt-in. Yep. Um, and now we're into the proposed zoning amendments. Article 42 um, is recreational marijuana zoning. Want to get into these. Um, well, the, to me, it's. I guess if, if, if the question is, do we recommend it or not? But um, You're right. understanding all the changes, I feel like I want to go to their meeting. So public hearing. The, the public 17th. hearing on the seventh. That's exactly. You're reading my mind. April seventeenth. I just wanted to check and make sure it's on. And where is that? It is Seven here. here. Seven o'clock here. Okay. Public hearing on zoning changes for recreational marijuana. Okay. And will, will all the the uh, red bylaws that they're quoting here will they be available online somewhere for people to see before the meeting? Yep, they're available they now. Are, yeah. If you if you go to the meeting calendar and click on the oh, on the, the planning calendar. board for seven p.m. on April seventeenth. They'll come up on the bottom of the proposed changes. So yeah. there's proposed changes for recreational marijuana um, in, in uh, farm breweries, and there's a the idea, as I understand it from the planning board, is that if the recreational marijuana zoning bylaws that they're proposing don't pass, they recommend a temporary moratorium um, as a backstop to giving the town additional time to or giving the planning board additional time to go back and address what people may have concerns with. And, and what are the proposed changes on the um, farm breweries? Um, oh, it was a lot of, I remember reading that. So if you look at... There's a lot of clarification. <clears throat> but it's not making it more difficult. Uh, yeah. So look at, if you look at appendix, there's an, there's an appendices to these. Uh, appendix D and appendix E. Appendix of which? On the on the warrant, there's a. There you go. There you go. So there's an I, I guess we'll call it an open question as to whether farm breweries would would be allowed. We went through this with we went through this with uh, the current brewery that exists now in Waitley as to whether. Essentially, what it boiled down to was whether beer was a horticultural product, and if it was, then there was the, the by right use. Um, it was essentially by right use, mm -hmm. uh, as long as the as long as the the retail space was less than three hundred square feet. Um, I believe I, I I can't speak for the planning board, but I'll infer from their their actions that they didn't feel that was the best way to permit these. So what they wanted to do here was specifically, um, specifically permit these through the special permit process, I instead of trying to squeeze a uh, square peg into a round hole. I, I guess I'm wondering the and and I, forgive me if I'm reading this misunderstanding or misreading this, but this is part of a marijuana zoning bylaw. Yeah. No, it's separate. Oh, it's separate. It's a separate. It is separate. Yeah. It's a separate I warn article, even, I think, right? But it's not yeah. in this. This is just marijuana. It's not in this. I don't oh, see no, it is. It's appendix D. Appendix B or D? D. D. Well, D. Is I'm looking at D. D is in dog. How is the farm brew germane to the marijuana license. It's not. They're totally separate zoning amendments. But it shouldn't, but you're saying it's in here. You're saying it's listed in the We don't vote on it separately. We yeah, do. It's we do. Article 45. Yeah, 46, you say, yeah. 
Uh, Article, Article 45 and 46 are zoning amendments related to farm breweries. Article 42, 43 are the recreational marijuana, proposed recreational marijuana zoning bylaw changes. And Article 44 is that stopgap temporary moratorium. Okay. So each one of these is articles, individual. I guess you could have called these Appendix 1 and 2 instead of C and D, I guess, right? Or, or D, I guess. It just strikes me that they're taking e. advantage of the need to address medical mar or the, the marijuana bylaw and, 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 and putting this in here. Just throwing it in there. No, I, I believe they conceptualize them totally separate. Yeah, I, I think so too. I, I yeah, he sent extensive questions to Jimmy about this. So is, is the purpose of Articles 45 and 46 Dan, you think it's to make it more difficult to have these things in Whateley? But we, I don't have, are we talking about brewery? Yeah. My understanding was that it was going to, there was going to be more restrictions, uh, whether it had to do with the pouring license, but I didn't get into it uh, real heavily. Because we never would want to take advantage of the huge craft brew industry that is booming in Western Massachusetts right now. I would uh, recommend you show up the 17th That'll be the next place to address it. You're not going to entertain me, I can tell. <laughs> I don't know it well enough, or I would. But, uh, let's see, if you want to talk about marijuana, I got that down pat. <laughs> okay. So they're, they're calling it different instead of a, what? Horticulture, it's a floriculture or nursery product. Right. So the point, the point, the point, is, that, yeah. the point of that, the point of that change is that, if I'm understanding the rationale correctly, is that that would exclude beer. There, there was an art, the, the decision of the building inspector essentially was that beer was a horticultural product because it was a, because it's processed from hops. Um, and it's not that different from apple cider or wine or something like that. Um, the problem, I think the point of board is trying to address is that that's by right in all zoning districts. So I think they were trying to be proactive to address what impacts might occur if somebody not as responsible as Hitchcock Brewing opened up in town. But, but if you look at the, the table of uses, I mean, for AR1, that's where Hitchcock Brewery is. This is saying now that it's not allowed use or future allowed use, right? Can't have an AR1. Right. Or no, no, you no, can't no. have an AR2. It's got to be in commercial industrial. Right. It cannot be in an agricultural residential area. They're saying it could be right. in AR2 With special by special per permit. Special permit, right, but not AR1. Not AR1. Special one. permit Correct. Here, in here. And remind me the difference between AR1 and AR2. 400 feet, AR2 is 400 feet back. AR1 is the first 400. Yeah. Okay. So that means that Hitchcock Brew is exempt from this change. Right. Because they're, they're 400 exempt. feet back. Well, plus their grandfather. Their grandfather, they're anyway, right. Yeah. But, yeah. And what happens if I want to, last time I checked, to make vodka, you have to grow a lot of potatoes. Last time I checked, we grow a lot of potatoes in Whateley. Yeah. So how does this impact my ability to open up a vodka distillery using the potatoes that are grown on River Road? I don't see a distillery. I don't, I'm not aware of a distillery permitted use. Because, and how is beer different than that? Because it's not distilled. You, you may want to look at the other Because I guess there's a... Table of uses for in the planning zone and the zoning bylaws. Do they talk about? Well, that's sort of my point. You don't know. There's, there's, it's not a rational table discrepancy. It's just, well, beer's okay, but vodka. Wait a second. Commercial. One vice is better than another vice. Still a product. It's what? Still a product of a, a process. Exactly. There's no real difference. You're not going to get an argument from me. <laughs> we don't. We don't. We don't. Know I'm looking if, forward to April 17th. We don't know if distilleries <laughs> are, are included somewhere else as another use. I, I, I don't believe they are. Uh, Joyce is looking at the yeah, rest of the bylaws. This is only one page. Right. There's a, it, this table. 
is like six pages long at least in the bylaws. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I remember downloading it and I'm not finding it like the website. I guess, yeah. I think it's a legitimate point to 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 ask why it wouldn't be allowed by special permit in the AR one. Um, right. That's typically where you have your houses, so. I think you would have some control over it with the special permit. Special permits are a discretionary permit. So, but I think there might be concerns about somebody going in and opening something up right next to somebody's house. I could see that argument being made in the AR2. It's typically probably more open in town, if I had to guess. So you wouldn't be right next to somebody's house. Well, AR2, you need a. 80,000 square foot lot. Yeah. I believe all that came in after that big developer did his project. Yeah. Yeah. But so April 17th would, would be the time to have discussions with the planning board. Or I'm sure it, it, it's a public hearing, you're also welcome to submit written comments or emails as well. You know, yeah. I, I, I think it would be important to. to highlight these on our website without being asking people to go through a, a, a meeting calendar and then click on the agenda to find out what's going on. I would say put them on the website, here's changes being proposed, bylaw changes for medical marijuana and farm brewery, right on the front page so people know what's being proposed. I think that's a good Majority idea. Majority of people aren't going to flip through five times to get a meeting agenda and then see a bylaw. They're not, you're right, you're right, friend. So they're going to come to town meeting and wonder, well, why didn't you tell us this was going on? I know somebody could do that. <laughs> so put it on earlier. I'm also wondering if we shouldn't, maybe we are going to do a robocall for the town meeting. Probably. Oh, we, we all we usually do. Yeah, I think every year for the last. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we one for the uh, 17th meeting also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I okay, think. let's. Okay. let's so, move. for the purposes of of this warrant, yeah, we have to decide what. Do you say want to recommend to anything? Do you want to for the not? We won't list anything. I feel, I don't feel somewhere. like I have enough information to recommend or not myself. Um, I don't. Uh, I, I think on the. From the from the rating I did and the questions I had, I feel more comfortable saying I'm I'm good with the marijuana bylaws as best we can do it. But there's even, there's lighting issues that I really would like us to be able to uh, do. You know, I have something more. I had somebody look at the language for the lighting on the marijuana facilities, and the language in here is is not that strong, and we couldn't really enforce having the lights being downward facing. Uh, which is we've got an observatory. We've got an, astron you know, an astronomy observatory up on the hill there, and uh, I'm not an astronomer, but I'm, many of my friends are. Uh, it, it, we need to reduce light pollution, and that would be that's one place to do it. So that's the, the main thing I had concerns about. That I think the other parts are pretty well. We've got to be consistent with Massachusetts law. Uh, I'm less comfortable with the. Horticulture versus floriculture versus mm -hmm. I wasn't I, I wasn't as satisfied with the answers I got, so it's one of the reasons I wanted to go to the seventeenth. Yep. Uh, and I, and I, I guess I don't feel like I understand it well enough to say mm -hmm. I recommend both of them. Um, there's still kind of I feel like there's questions and we haven't had a lot of time with this either. No. Right? That's right. definitely true. This is This is the first meeting, really. This is that the first open, was that's our public discussion. General. We got a we got a you know, email, email to read it. Um, we were able to ask Judy questions by email. Um, this has been a, a, an abbreviated, it's been, a nice way to put it, it's abbreviated been, process. Oh, you're so polite, yeah. Well, I, I guess yeah. we could maybe leave Article 44 there. If, if they don't count on a grade, do we select boards feel it should be moratorium? That may be an easier one to decide today if we want to do that or not. That's the backup. That's, That's the backup. backup. Yeah. Do we want yeah. to do we want to see if the town will uh, recommend the towns? They'll they'll ask to pass it over it. Right. Pass it over. Pass right. over it if there's. Wait, I'm confused and I apologize. 
Why are they asking for a moratorium potentially? Well, it says if, if a only if are not adopted. We don't adopt the two marijuana bylaws. They want a moratorium. If we don't pass the uh, the hoard the brewery ones, there's no moratorium. Right, I get that. To go with that. I guess what they're saying is if there's a, if there's so much concern with what we've proposed here, let's have a moratorium and buy ourselves some time. Right. Um, well, in the moratorium, if you and don't have a moratorium, year. it goes to state. It, everything's yeah. up. Wild, wild west. State regs right. kick in. It, yeah. right. it doesn't opt out. Yeah, which, which nobody knows what they mean you for sure yet. Right. Actually. You probably couldn't deny it, but there would still be... Well, it's then, be subject to the other. To, to Joyce's point, perhaps, and I see marijuana as a huge economic development thing, opportunity. And I don't want the town, personally, I don't want the town to do anything that would put someone who wanted to get into this business behind the eight ball because of potential delays. That being said, to do it, Joyce's point, we're being asked to recommend stuff that I have no idea whether we should recommend this or not. 42 and 43, I mean. Right. But then again, I don't want to delay someone's potential to get in, as an agricultural community, to get involved in this industry and, and help the economic climate of this region. But we haven't been given any time to. Is there any reason why this couldn't be at the June special town meeting instead? I think because it would potentially hinder someone's ability to get into the game economically. <laughs> then you only have 12 people voting on it. Well, well no, I think if this were on the agenda for a June town meeting, I think people would show up. That I, I'm less worried about that myself, but I'm more worried about the rush. But doesn't there have to be a vote on this, Ryan? Does it have to be on town, the town ballot? Town meeting. No, town no, ballot. It's town, town meeting and then it has to go on town no, ballot? No, no. Town what ballot. am no, I thinking? No, it, no. There, what are you're, thinking correct, to be? you're correct. And there's, if we were to do certain, if the bylaw was to regulate certain aspects of these, if we were to prohibit one of these types of marijuana establishments, it would require a ballot vote. Right. Okay. A subsequent ballot vote. If we were to prohibit um, is it more than 20 per if we were to limit less than 20 percent of our retail alcohol licenses it would require a second ballot vote and there's one other um, requirement in state law but we don't trigger any of those oh we don't okay no. it's not meeting vote so this no. one's just oh okay because i think people will feel pushed and i don't think i don't respond well to it i don't think my neighbors do i don't think most people respond to me here, 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 you have to do this or we're never going to have marijuana in our town and, and we're put, or for, for going all of this economic development. Here, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. And having it on such short notice, I think people are going to feel like, you know, they, they really won't be comfortable voting in the end. And if this moratorium, it says until June 1st, 2019, why can't it be... June 30th, 2018. It is. It's just not fully worded there. It's it's until no, 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 the yeah. but, but, that, but trust it, me, it's, it's until no. regulations are put in that the town will accept. It's not the way it's worded. Yeah, they would end on that. Well, we we can't vote on something that's worded incorrectly though. Unless, well, unless that's a good reason to come to that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So that's that's based. That's just saying we've got. A year to figure it out. And then it sunsets. And it sunsets automatically in a year. Right, but if they right. fix it before. But if we fix it in June of 2018, then that's when the moratorium ends. Right. Okay. Now, just that, to, I understand yes. that. But, but we could, like, promise to fix it earlier. That's right. the other thing that might, uh, it might ease the fears of someone who's thinking of investing um, that, oh, it's only a two month moratorium. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't going to get my thing going in two months anyway, right? The uh, just a little article of outfits opening in Montague and their proposed impact on the town is two hundred and ten thousand dollars a year in revenue, one retail outlet. So just yeah. right. 
That's yeah. Now, yeah, we'll, now I completely probably bigger that. in Montague than it would be in Whaley, but still the point taken. Yeah, but Whaley was going for three. <laughs> right. Well, this kind of comes back to, to an issue maybe a couple of meetings ago we talked about is, is how to get the public to attend these meetings and to get their input. You know, we, we debated, Brian and I have talked about it about every week of the information meeting, the four-town meeting, and there was just too much going on and too much uncertainty to present anything. Maybe we want to do this after town meeting, talk about the, the marijuana bylaws, we can bring up the school, uh, blue school building uh, in the parcel there, and uh, we still got the, the water merger on the agenda whenever, I guess, but I mean, just have information meeting on, on them items where people will come and, and talk about it, and then we can make a decision based on what we hear. Otherwise, we hear you here, and uh, whoever's looking on the camera, if they speak up, but. Well, I think it'd be interesting for, I, I recommend all of you come to the April 17th. These folks have put in a ton yeah. of work. A ton of work, and I'm not. Uh, it, it is on the calendar. Right. And, and, know, but it's... and it may be that they will be able to effectively communicate that to anybody who shows up, and therefore, effectively communicate to folks at town meeting, that that's, that's fine. But so far, just from reading and what emails I've done, I am not feeling so, so sure. Of course, okay. if, if we're not satisfied with what happens on the 17th, when we get to town meeting floor, we can say individually or collectively, you know what, we're no longer comfortable with this. Right. You and do have only, that potential. And I don't disagree. The only concern there is both of those, I believe, are two-thirds votes. Yeah. And if neither of them pass, then it all's for not. Yep. Then how long do you have to wait to bring it up again? Is there it's, a time limit, Brian? It goes to state. No? You, can bring it, you can bring it up anytime you want. As long as the planning board votes it out favorably. Yeah. Okay. You can uh, bring it back within the two-year period. I went to their meeting a week or two ago when they talked about it. There was nobody else. Well, one person there, but didn't come from marijuana, it came from other things, but there was no discussion, That's no simple, public yeah. input. That's it, simple, it, though. it could be, yeah. maybe it's maybe it's a non-issue, but I, it, I'm having to, uh, I feel tonight being pushed to say recommend or not recommend. Right, so we can strike we, that. If, if we could be silent on that and yeah. say it on the day of rather than. And speak individually or collectively or whatever. We, we right. may feel we'll, we'll like we can speak collectively. Uh, I just, I don't feel like I can do that right now. We'll you know, we we typically meet before. Yeah. We yeah. We try the, to move our so right. we before usually do a little so meeting before. before. Yeah. But I, I I I would be more more comfortable uh, with that. Okay. Do so you want to strike that language recommend by the select board? Uh, yeah. Strike 42, it for the yeah. All of them. Yeah. Um, forty-two, forty-three. Right. All of them. Even the moratorium. I don't know if I feel like that's a good idea either. What can, Is that can what we? Want to? I mean, it's what I want to do, but I'm, I'm only one vote out of right. three here. I'm not, well, I, I, I'm fine striking those. I, I also personally would strike the farm brewery thing, too. Yeah, that's the recommended. Okay, right. Can, can we ask planning board for a written uh, response? Well, uh, for the final bylaws that they're proposing and a summary or comments that they received on them before our, we make a recommendation. Otherwise, you're not going to know what was discussed well, and whether there was be opposition. On the, seven, on the 17th. Well, unless you go on the 17th. Well, we're, are you not going? I don't know yet. Okay. I have to look my schedule, but uh, but I, I I would like to see something. Let them recommend, propose something to us. Tell us what comments so we're comfortable. We all agree. We all see it and know what was okay. said. What the what the opposition was. Okay. So I move to, or do we need to move or just tell no, you? Just, okay. We just won't have recommended for those for those planning. Right, just so I understand what. Yeah. So can I ask can Brian? Could you relay that message to the planning board that we want something that after the seventeenth, they're, they're meeting on the seventeenth. Like, well, will anybody be? What would? Yeah. What would he? The final, I whatever guess, they're proposing. I this mean, is final. Making, whatever. Well, what comments they received? Would it, whatever. Yeah, we could we could see whatever comments they 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 could only make, at this point they can only make um, 
insignificant changes to the text of okay. the zoning amendments, except for changes on Tommy and Four. Which are rarely well crafted, yeah. unfortunately. Right. Okay, well, if we so, put it on if we put it on our websites before so we, the seventeenth so people can see it. I mean we can have discussions with with Judy or or Don or whoever from the planning board to see how how it goes. Well we could ask them to come the that day at our six o'clock meeting. Yeah, that'll make it go real fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's try to move on. Well, okay, okay, we got the, the two for the school, Brian. Yep, so let's go back to 39 and 40. Yeah. How do we want to proceed to these? Read what's proposed here. Exercise its right of first refusal. Purchase the property for $1,000. Well, it is, is the offer, I got the sense that the offer is really not a firm offer until the school acts. Right. So, Fred and I were having conversations about this. Yeah. Our right of first refusal was triggered when we have an offer, when Frontier, when we get, an, we receive an offer from, from Frontier, and they send us a copy of the purchase and sale agreement between Frontier and Mr. O'Bear. That's obviously contingent on the town not exercising its right of first refusal. Right. But until that point, there's not, there's not a, there's not a binding offer that that frontier has. So I don't, I don't see it as germane to them. Is this like there for like just in case? Right, if next week Frontier sends us something. So in order to exercise our, in order for the town to exercise the right of first refusal, it takes town meeting vote and it will take an appropriation. Right. Let, let's assume Frontier gets its ducks in a row. We get an offer, there's a signed purchase and sale agreement. It's contingent on that. I've relayed that to Frontier as well and I've encourage them to talk to their council about it. That triggers a 30-day period in which the town has to exercise the right of first refusal. So from the date we get it, we have 30 days. If we want to exercise it, we need to have, hold a town meeting and residents can vote yay or nay to, ex to exercise it. Okay, if we don't do it within 30 days, we lose yeah. our right to first refusal. Correct. Okay. Could, we wa could we waive our right of first refusal prior to a formal offer? I believe you could. Um, but what are we refusing? I mean, what? we don't have an offer. They don't have an offer, so what? If, if, I guess what I'm wondering is could you could. craft language that says, based upon what we have seen from Obert Construction, if that becomes a formal offer, we waive the right of first refusal? Uh, I, I'm not comfortable. You're, you're, you're kind of yeah. forcing I, Frontier to, to make a decision in our favor. I, I'm, I'm just trying to take advantage of the fact that we have town meeting coming up. Yeah. Cool. No. I, I think that will take okay. that's some, yeah. some lawyering that I don't know. Yeah. It will take some time. Yeah. Then, then it shouldn't be on. I mean, it's a moot point. Well, it will be. Well, if you get an offer, say, on April 20th, or Frontier sends us the purchase and sale agreement and the right of first refusal on April 20th. Do we want to put it on the, do we want to discuss it or not? Because you're going to have 30 days after that to decide. Uh, so you'd have to have a special town meeting, say uh, May 20th, the latest to, to get input and decide. I, I, I don't think that looks good on a board waiting, having a special meeting or have another town meeting a month after we had an annual one. If it's for, a, you know, a if, little, if it's for something like that, I think people understand. Well, but I, I, and I don't think this is about us looking good or looking bad. It's about doing the right thing. No, but you're going to get more input at this meeting right. than you would supposedly a, a month later. Well, I thought we had already agreed we were going to we we're going to talk about this to get the input from people. Regardless of whether we did something about it on yeah. that well, time scale. Well, then we would leave it on the... Because if you voted for this article, that would mean we basically have to go back to the drawing board, though, right? So the, the whole point of the article is if we really exercise a right of first refusal, um, we buy the lot from Frontier. It's assuming a purchase and sale agreement came in before town meeting so that this would actually happen. 
Um, you were telling me that that was not a great thing to do. Right. In fact, I think I called it stupid at the time. Right. So right. we'd be putting something on here that we would be recommending that we do not exercise. The, that we, we that, and the town itself has to decide that. Yeah. And uh, so also if we don't take any action, isn't that also giving up your right of first refusal? But it might mean the town is pissed off with you because of it. If you screw up like that, that would be viewed as a screw up. You didn't give. You didn't give the didn't town give a chance, chance to, right, to, to do it. Up. Okay, so so that we want to give people the chance, and I. I think we should have a conversation at town meeting, and then yeah. schedule a subsequent town meeting. If we need, if, if we, we need, need to. to, we can always uh, well table the article. I guess right. We can bring up discussion and just table it. Right. And we can hear what the discussion is and it, hmm. I mean Joyce isn't that what you're advocating for kind of I I'm not quite sure exactly what to advocate for I certainly understand that it's better to have more input on something and but we don't know if we're going to have purchase and sale agreement and by putting this on there when we don't have a purchase and sale agreement what if it passes <laughs> no I'm, well, I'm saying we just have a conversation we we don't Put it up for yeah. a vote. I know, right? I think that might be wiser. Right. Yeah. No, I'm not suggesting you put it up for a vote at all. It's 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 a conversation piece. Yeah. But you need a warrant article to bring it up as a no, conversation. I think we can. Piece. I think we can have informational items mm -hmm. on the town meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not allowed to have something that's not an article. I'd have to talk with. It's really the moderator. To see if the town will listen to people talk about. We could put an article like that. To <laughs> see if the town will listen to us talk about possible disposal of this property. Uh, okay, but yeah. but in the meantime, supposing uh, Frontier does come through between now and the 24th, do we want this article on the annual meeting? Can you have this discussion on the April 17th, make that part of that public meeting information type thing? Well, I mean, realistically, you're not gonna get a PNS by the town meeting. I mean, that's, that's going to be a that, complicated process yeah. with that building and stuff between the parties. And if they haven't started anything yet. Yeah, right, right. there's not. So, it's, it's, I think just take we should take the whole thing off, but we, I think we should get the information off out about this. I mean, we can put written information out. We could put uh, an announcement someplace. Oh, we can set a date we for a meeting. Set a date for, a, for a meeting to talk about. Annual town meeting. Um, I think all of those things are, are and, right, and then at least we made the op op the option and opportunity for people to participate in the com conversation. Yeah, and the second article forty, that's one that we would need in order to proceed if we were to get. Now, now does forty mean we have a purchase and sale agreement in hand or not? Um, it, that would not be not necessarily. Yeah. So that would be an opportunity to say, look, this is what we have. Um, if you want to put the whole thing in our hands, here's the information we have at the moment. I mean, that's what it's really asking. Put this in the board of selectmen's hands. Yeah. So, like we would say, this is the plan. And we would say, we go on record and say, this is the plan. This is the plan. Go for it. You'd like us to, if, you know, this, I guess, the, like you said, the plan could be amended. There could be a developer agreement. There could be some other things happening. But this is the basic plan. Do you trust us to? work in the town's best interest and, and right. give us that right. vote of confidence, knowing that we would have to come back to you later for uh, another vote on the I think that's legitimate. Person. I think that's totally legitimate. If, if, yeah, we could do it that way, but if, if Frontier doesn't agree with that, with their proposal, then it's a mute point well, for of course, us. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Then that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Frontier doesn't agree with what proposal? Albert's proposal. Yeah, but then, I'm not then sure we have the right to negotiate over nothing. At least we have the right, right, you know. Okay. Well, we could, yeah, or we could, we could buy it from them, start all over. Oh, Bear is the only serious. I think they'll be thrilled with the proposal. I, they've got to be, right? Well, they, they we've, be, we've heard yeah. some negative stuff at the meeting, so. Oh, yeah, we don't know because they want cash. cash. Oh, somebody will want more than $1,000. I, I, well, I don't I know who would want more than $1,000 for that. 
There's, there's, um, they bought it for a dollar. They're making nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars on that. And they're getting out from under a tremendous cost that yeah. are being shared by four towns right there now. Okay, go. let's move on. Yeah. So what do we do? What do we decide here? Let's stick with. I would. I would argue we we, we jettison thirty nine and we stick with forty. And use that as an opportunity to to talk bring up thirty nine. Yes. To bring up thirty nine. To, to, no, to bring up the 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 opportunity the concept. to have the yeah. concept uh, to get the information out to say you're you know you're telling us here that you trust us to to see this through and mm -hmm. somewhere in there we can say there's. The adjacent property we're working with the schools on that may come up for another vote at a future town meeting near you. So okay. it most likely will. I mean, yeah. Assuming Frontier accepts it, right, and gets to see off, we'll have 30 days from when's, yeah, from when uh, Frontier. How long does it take to put together a special town meeting? Ten days is when the warrant has to be. Uh, Ten days ahead of the town meeting. It's 14. So it needs to be 14, 14 days. 14 days. So it takes. Yeah. So we have to decide. Half weeks. Yeah. So I, I have no problem saying that if Frontier delivers this bill of sale to us, that we jump right on and the very next possible date we can have a special time meeting. We have a special time meeting. That I have no problem with. Okay. So we want to leave Article 40 and recommend by select board and take 39 out. Yes. So we decide. Okay. Okay. The other, the other time clock that's running on this is the 90 days from the offer. Well, let's I think we've got a little bit of 90 days left, though. We do, right. but yeah. depending on when we get first right or right. Well, that's, the, let's, let's, and let's cross that bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Really, if, if, if he doesn't want to yeah. stay here on the project, I'd rather the 90 days run out. Yeah. Because that means he's not committed. I don't have any reason to think he... Yeah. Right. right. He seems pretty think, committed. Right. Okay. I think... Okay. This is good. This is the beginning of a, a long process yeah. to redevelop this property. This is not a. We're gonna be yeah. we're gonna be dealing with this for, right, a while for the things that yeah. need to happen. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 happen. and things that are finally happening. I think that's yeah. another way someone will look at that. Okay, okay let's move on. Uh, Simon, we're not done yet. Chapter uh, so we're sixty-one A, notice of intent. All right, of course, we Wait, do we have to sign the so town meeting warrant? So do you want to sign it subject to those changes? Rather than meet again, yes. Yeah, Rather yeah. than meet again on Friday. And I brought my okay. pretty pen, too. On binder. Okay, so the next one is I was going to exercise right of first refusal, lot number eight, Masterson Road. Louise Hannum and the state of Richard S. Hannum. Yep. So you have a lot plan that was put in the meeting material. This is lot number eight um, on Masterson Road, shown on the plan. Um, it was in Chapter 61A. They're asking. Um, to release it from 61A, which triggers the town's right of first refusal. Purchase price for the lot is $70,000. We have a 120 day period to exercise. Jeez, all these right of first refusals. How fun. Um, yeah. So, do we want to buy it for $70,000? This is just lot eight? Lot eight. And if we had that right on all the other lots? I wasn't here, but I would assume yeah, we've, so. We've had many, many of these are choices: buy it or let them sell it. Sell so, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I, I don't think we have a. I don't think we have a problem. We don't have not surplus. No, 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 I, would, I, would, we, I would move. We waive the right of first refusal. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, sign bank documents for CPA bank loan for the town hall project. Yep, so this is the, if you recall, at the almost a year ago, um, the town approved borrowing up to four, up to four hundred thousand dollars in CPA back um, loan. So this is the, these are the loan documents. Is 
what the majority of. So I assume we're signing here okay. or there. Okay. Um, just the one that says sign SB. So okay. yeah, yeah. So here, one of those five lines. One of those five lines. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next time, the declaration of surplus property, and you sent us a sheet here from yep. police and uh, fire. Well, hold on one sec. We also have the sign here. Okay. These, I think it's a yep, select them. And these are the same. Hours we're, gonna, fun. we're gonna start making bad decisions soon, so get us out of here. Please tell us what's the surplus property? The declaration of surplus property. There's two sheets in here. One is um, a list of equipment from the highway department, and the other one is a letter from the fire chief asking the town to declare the 2009 Chevy and Powell Cruiser surplus property and to be sold. So the select board gets to declare a surplus property. Our bylaws say we need to offer it to other departments first, and then we can dispose of it. Typically, we do these th through municipal the online yeah. auction site. Um, so unless you want to select board 2009 Chevy Impala, I'm not. You're not recommending thinking, that. Thinking uh, you? you're gonna want uh, it, but yeah. I say we pass. Okay. Well, yeah, our department should pass on that. Now, we brought this up, and, and Joyce and I did it at the last meeting or, or two, about the third vehicle that's used for uh, detail, and we asked for uh, information on the cost to the town of maintaining that vehicle, yep. mostly insurance costs, and how often it's used, and whether we should main, retain it for that or declare it a surplus property. Dispose of it for the, for the for the the one that's coming off the front. Right, line. the one that's mm -hmm. coming off. Right. I'm I have some costs. I'm working with Jim to get to try to get a uh, full okay. picture. Okay, so I do have the insurance costs. I think it was eight hundred twenty dollars or something. Okay, insure the two thousand nine. Um, oh, okay, but uh, we're still working on that. Okay, okay so you have that on a future agenda. Okay. Okay. okay, please tell us you have no updates. Town Administrator updates. It's, it's been a while since you've been here, so I figured we'll, we'll do extra work. Yeah. Save them. You want to stay here? For, or we can go silently. Uh, <laughs> my hip's dying here. Uh, I'll do two quick ones. Um, we, well, we applied for the, there's a culvert, DEP culvert grant that we said we we're going to apply for on Williamsburg Road. We applied for that last Friday. That's for the design of the culvert. Um, and then just to, while we're on Williamsburg Road, there's, the engineering is still taking place for the, uh, the replacement bridge. Um, so those are both still moving forward. And I don't know if we ever talked about the, the results of the, of the scoping of the sprinkler system at the elementary school here. I think we talked about it briefly at the finance committee, but um, it, the whole system doesn't need to be replaced. Um, it could use some flushing. There was some heavy sediment that they found in a couple sections. Um, some places of, of, of pipe that should probably be replaced because they're pitted. And, um, and then, if you recall, we still have the, the order from the building inspector to re replace all the sprinkler heads. So that's, that, that's a capital item on the, uh, on the Tommy and Warren. But luckily, it wasn't uh, anything more than that. Okay. At some point, we may want to talk about now they have um, different nitrogen type systems, which will, uh -huh. um, they're made specifically made for dry systems that um, will remove the oxygen from the system oh. and it will prevent additional future corrosion. Okay. Um, that, that was also recommended, but it's not part of the. Okay. And we're going to put it on the schedule for, for annual flushing. Um, 
Yes, we should, should be flushed either annually or it should it, be flushed on a regular basis. It was not happening. Was I not can only happening. assume. Right, and it should. So we avoid this down the road. Right. And the, the nitrogen system is, is what will help prevent the future corrosion. Who's responsible for making sure that schedule is actually applied? Um, if no one's right responsible now, for it, it won't happen. Right now, it would be the, the school has control over the asset. The school has control over the, the maintenance of the building. Can we ask for a schedule of a flushing schedule from the school? We could. I think that would be wise because I, I really, I, I get people are busy, but it wasn't happening and it almost, it has cost us some money, but it almost cost us an awful lot of money. And I think that it is our right and responsibility to ask for a schedule to make sure that it's happening in the future. How would you that? Does that sense. come from, from Whiteley School or Frontier? Is the Frontier managing the maintenance of all the buildings? And there's a, a person yep. from So that would come from Frontier, the schedule of how they're going to maintain the flushing of that. Yeah, but we ask Pete. We ask Pete for this and Pete will take care of the other. There, there's, there's a facilities director that yeah. maintains, is supposed to be responsible for Frontier and the elementary schools. I'd, I'd like to see, you know, when it's done, I'd like, and we completed this on X date. What do we do that in this building? We should. Is it being done here? We have a wet system. My understanding is you don't have to flush it. Oh, we don't. No. The ground system sweat, and then the oxygen reacts with the moisture. That's where you get your corrosion as opposed to it. Build system, there's no oxygen other than the oxygen the, in the water. Right, once that oxygen is depleted from the right. water, there's no more. It's, it's the same concept of, of the, 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 the ocean waters below Trinity Church, making sure that those waters stay on the pylons and rather than aerating them because yeah. the oxygen will make it corrode, right? Okay, so our next meeting that is. That was a non sequitur. Our next meeting is at 6 o'clock before the annual meeting and at 24. What for you guys? All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Those in favor? Aye.